was you weren't able to join us last week when we did. Was it, did we do an episode? I don't know. Whenever the fuck we did. Tuesday. Episode, t- Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday, if you're from the UK. Um, on Tuesday, we talked uh, some live show stuff, but you weren't there. Was you were you were busy? You couldn't join the recording. So I'm curious uh, for the people out there, what were your thoughts on the live show, both the uh, Soho House and at uh, Racket NYC? Um, Soho House was really cool in the sense that that's not an event that we you know that we're able to sit down and curate and have a bunch of our family and friends and a bunch of people come come out um, and like genuine Soho House members. Uh, pulled up, not knowing what to expect. And, you know, f- overwhelmingly felt like they got something out of what we were doing and felt entertained and compelled to follow us and want to follow our work. And I just thought that was just cool in terms of like, oh, shit, like, you know, it's not just our our band of mis- misfits that, that fuck with what we do. It's like... Right. You know, we can we can even uh, talk to a Soul House audience who's, you know, hoity-toity, foofy. Um, and I'll have you guys know that since I've uh, procured my membership, I've I've used it quite oh, a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Let me tell you guys, if you ever make your way to Mexico City and you are a Soul House member, you need to fucking go to that house. It is amazing. Like, it is it's it's jaw dropping how beautiful it is and like it's got the pool and it's got the pool house and it's got the tequila tasting room and it's yeah, it's just uh it was amazing um but yeah i thought that was for me that was the coolest part about it um, i just want everybody to know that that was not an ad read for soho house that was just was <laughs> it's just, uh, just, appreciating just and life. pandering <laughs> at the same time um, so that was the coolest thing about that. And then, you know, the, the, our shit, uh, at the racket, um, was just a like super emotional, um, night for me in terms of just the joy I got out of it. Um, I'm not really nervous about what we do in terms of live shows anymore. Yeah. It's kind of like, we kind of know what the fuck we're doing as crazy as that sounds. Um, so I'm never nervous about that, but it just had been so long since we had gotten together as a group and not just, you know, people that do what we do at Count the Things, but the people who support us um, yeah. and have been supporting us throughout the years and encouraging our work. And so just getting together under one roof was just it, it was just amazing, man. Like I said, like just an emotional experience for me. I hadn't I, I hadn't seen Jade um since he got into the accident. And mm-hmm. so that was my first time seeing him since and like actually getting to hug Jade and, and make him laugh and like do the thing that that was just our customary thing that you know you end up taking for granted, right? While while you're doing it. Like that was just incredible. And shouts to Chrissy, his wife, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Jake, his brother. Uh, just, you know, it was just, it was just amazing to be with everybody. And, you know, like we had a few of our homies there, like Maddie was there, um, Madeline Burke, um, Mm -hmm. she works in the industry. We had Eve, the founders, uh, president of Dreamville Records, who I've known since I'm 14, who was, you know, basically family with Amin. Eve's college and high school friends were with him. Um, just people that's not in our world, but people who I know personally and that I know had never been to our thing. Yeah. And just how tickled they were by the shit we were doing up there. Yeah. Like, there's just a special gratification from that. You know, um, like, like Eve specifically, who's somebody I know is locked into sports TV. Like, he's, he's just, every time I see him, he's peppering me with takes and NBA takes and all of that kind of stuff. Yeah, like, happen. for us to deliver, you know, Bomani and Nick Wright <clears throat> yelling at each other on mm-hmm. stage as if it was a TV show, but in person and have everybody like get such a kick out of it. Even the unhinged maniac, maniacal um, heckler in the front row. Hope he made it home safe. I don't um, know if he did. Like that just felt very gratifying, man. Yeah. It, it like, honestly, it's just affirming. And I say this shit all the time. Like, we do so much media at this point, guys, like between me, Maze, Harper, like we're doing so many podcasts, you know, every now and again, they got me on TV, you know what oh, I'm saying? Oh, wow. Yeah. Every Dominique once in a Fox, while. When he's got, when, when when while. Has time. Yeah. You know, every once in a while, mm-hmm. they put me on TV. A lot of times, man, 
it can feel like you're just speaking into the void and there is no meaning to anything that you do, mm-hmm. that you're just a cog in this fucking sports media machine. And, you know, you do your part to keep the engine going, but nobody really cares about your individual contribution. Um, the live show, man, like hanging out with fans before and after the show and talking to people and like people catching up with me about all the shit. Cause like, obviously my fucking work situation is so drastically changed since mm-hmm. the last time we did a live show. Just like people being like, no, I like follow everything that you're doing. Like, I love when you're doing this. I love your dynamic with this person. I love yeah. when you're making bill nervously laugh when you're in his pod, like blah, 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 Here's blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, well. <laughs> I take pride in that. Um, <laughs> That to me was another part. It's just like the gratification, man. Like I'm not somebody who needs like my boss to tell me like every two weeks, like pat me on the ass. Like, watch, you're doing a great job. Like, I don't really care about that shit. Honestly, you want me to stop doing that? Watch. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really care about that on a, on a day to day basis, but I'm telling you, it felt really gratifying to see people. You know, and people that like really give a like feel invested in the work that we do. That shit is, you know, not to get all pie in the sky and corny, man. That shit is amazing. I think that's like that's a big part of why we even do what we're doing, man. Like our shit actually like makes people happy and like people get like something out of what we do. Like that shit is just amazing. So that's my round uh, live show round. Then, nigga, speaking of fucking getting on TV. The the homie that did the the, the Trump um, impressions and the oh, and Josh, Rosa. Josh Rosa man, yeah. Nick Wright saw him at our show. He smashed it at our show, mm-hmm. and Nick yep. was like, "Bro, I'm putting you on TV. Period. Yeah, you're great. Yep. You're talented. Like that was. It was like two incredible. days later, right? Like incredible. It was, yeah. <laughs> yeah, incredible, bro. Just incredible. Yeah. Shouts to Josh Rosen. Shouts to Nick Wright. Um, yeah, it's funny, like. There is such a difference. Like, you're right. We do just speak into the void all the time. Like, there is no real... Like, you might get a reaction from people you're podcasting with or whatever, but... And, you, you know, you get tweets, you get DMs, Bro, and stuff we like do that. podcasts about pick protections. That's a thing we do in our line of work. I hate... I <laughs> fucking hate talking about future first-round picks. Can oh, I just say my that? God, I'm so... Sa- I will not respect the idea... <laughs> Of the hallowed future first round pick ever no, again. I never will. No, I don't care. It's not happening. Like, isn't that too much? Fuck. Isn't that too much? No, no I'll I take the care. real person right now. Yeah. And then deal it. with that shit later. Yeah, who cares? We'll figure something else out. It's like when I order sushi. So you're in, that's you're a problem in real for future world assets. assets. Is that what yes. you're saying, Zach? Yeah, you like that's real a problem world for assets? future them. Go win a fucking championship now. Yeah, period. We're always like, oh, how can they build a title contender? Well, they can't do it without draft picks. Yeah, you can. This is what we did. Bro, like at the trade deadline or when the last big transaction, like me, Rob Mahoney and Justin Verry would literally spend 15 minutes on. Was that too much? Was that like, think about that. And like, what does that even mean? You know, basically five too minutes much. after our our audience has consumed it. Everyone's so <laughs> scared because a, a Russian oligarchy who made his money in metals and acid, acid wash jeans. Uh, just decide, yeah, I don't care what, just get the deal done. So a deal got done, and then Danny Ainge benefited from it by getting Tatum and Brown as a part of that deal later on. And so now everyone's like, oh, you can't give up. To- Shut the fuck up. No, but just also it's for Paul Pierce and Kevin Garnett. They were cooked when and he Jason did that. Jason Terry. Don't forget Jason Terry. Oh, Jason Terry. I think Keith Bogans was involved too, if I remember correctly. <laughs> Shout out to Keith Bogans. I saw Keith Bogans um, at the pool in Vegas. Uh, still looks great, by the way. <laughs> That's Summer the League. weirdest thing you could have said. I just did. I, I saw it. Talking about Summer League. You, you, the, you just, yeah. you just, do you put the name out there? I had to drop it. I hey, dapped them up. Hey, speak, I said of hashtag C Red. Oh my you God. know? <laughs> hey, man, you and Roddy Brewer, you were the truth. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Speaking by the pool, I went to Mo Dakil's wedding in Hawaii. Yes. How was that? First of all, let me say this. Uh, Honolulu. No. 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 Honolulu is no. not, not a place to be. Wow. Was uh, this your the first we- time ever in Hawaii? No, I went to Kauai, I don't know, 20-something years ago. Okay. Um, when I was 19. Uh, so this is your that. first time as a full-grown man, for real? Full-grown full adult, not being paid for by my girlfriend's family. 
Oh, mm. yeah. Mm. <laughs> oh, Harper, man. He's been the shout, same for years. Shout, to, guy, shout to the Donahues. <laughs> um, it's, uh... <laughs> Shouts to them. They gave up all their future picks to take they you did. to Hawaii. Oh, we're oh. Dead. No, that dude's fucking loaded, man. Their, their oh dad was God. loaded. Uh, but um, yeah, but uh, so the resort, the wedding itself, the ceremony, the reception, everything. Mm-hmm. 10 out of 10. Yeah. Unbelievable. That's awesome. We did yeah, not had, stay at the know, resort. I, had, I was not able to make uh, most things because of a scheduling conflict, but like yeah. I had... You know, I've had looked up the hotel that they had situated. Oh, dude. It looked. I didn't stay there because that shit was expensive. But It looked crispy. I spent yes. my last day there hanging out. And it's, oh, man. Like I it, looked at it. It looked like a crisp $100 bill. Like it was a, that it was feeling a, it, that It was you a get. crisp $1,000 bill. That's what it was. <laughs> it was. Mm-hmm. was. They have dolphins at that hotel. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm not Serious talking about business. Tyreek Hill. I'm talking yeah. about actual dolphins. Yeah. Like. Yeah, there's six of them. They have six dolphins just hanging. Yeah, hanging this in this little the, lagoon. This is not the courtyard Marriott. Mm-mm. No, no, not at all. Shouts to the Marriott um, and all the shouts members. to the Marriott. We stayed at a Marriott. Amin assured me that there were uh, that this was an adults only hotel. There were kids fucking everywhere. <laughs> that was a family ass hotel. <laughs> Didn't even go to the pool because there's so many kids around the pool. I don't want to be around kids. <laughs> Not for me, but uh, the wedding was <laughs> phenomenal. Uh, we, you know, Mo is actually married. He Crazy. Did he did Congratulations, it. Congratulations, Mo. Congratulations. Ceremony was amazing. Food was amazing. Um, reception was so much fun. The DJ sucked. I mean, got in a fight with uh, an Uber driver. Uh, but then we took everybody to karaoke after, and it was nice. just a, a incredible, incredible celebration. Then we hung out the next day until we flew out. Um, here's my question though about Honolulu. One, everything there is open air. Okay. There's not a damn closed window or wall to to be found. Wow, that's interesting. But this is I, a tropical island. It rains out there, no? It rains? Yeah. There are hurricanes. <laughs> okay. It's okay. hot and sweaty as fuck. Yeah, that's a problem. I'm talking about the airport has open windows yeah, the to airport. the tarmac. The airport is open air, which was a big surprise. Like the sometimes, like the terminals where you're actually like boarding your flight, those yeah. are closed off. But when you're walking around the airport, open Wait, air. Wait, so when you when you go to check in, like mm-hmm. you know, get your Delta bag, yeah. Tag, yeah, self yeah. drop thing, yeah. Yeah. open air. Oh, you feel the, air, the you feel the air. Oh, there's no air conditioning, was. <laughs> oh, you just there, sticky. And I, I will say this: look, shouts to Delta, like. I think Delta goes out of their way to make their customers feel good about flying. I think yes. that's why they like have engendered this cultish like status amongst the people that love Delta. I think it's because they really go out of their way mm-hmm. to make customers feel like they matter. Um, that being said, most airline workers are fucking miserable. They're mean as shit. They're very short and curt. And I'm trying to imagine putting that attitude in 96 degree weather. Yeah. I will say this. No the, AC. The people at Delta that I dealt with in Honolulu were fantastic. Okay. But I, but I flew to Oregon. I flew to Oregon, and um, but I had to go through Seattle, right? So I take a red eye to Seattle, mm. wait like an hour or so, uh, and then a connecting flight to Portland, which is what's, not. What's fun. Seattle? The Queen City? Emerald City. The Emerald City. Charlotte's the Queen City. Okay, the Emerald yeah. City. Sorry. Emerald City. Um, and so they bumped me up to first class for the connecting flight Ooh. from Seattle. Well, no, it's yeah, it's a 26 minute. Oh, like you're in the air for 26 damn, minutes, you right? You can't get anything out of it. Yeah. But here's the thing. Well, Fuck. you literally can't get anything. So let me tell you what happened. <laughs> I go, I sit, I'm in one C, right? Front row, all that shit. Put my bags up, all that stuff. The flight attendant comes over to me and says, do you want anything once we get off the ground? Would you like a beverage? I said, you know what? Just like a black coffee would be great. I'm tired. It's 7 a.m. Like, let me just get a black coffee, right? She responds with, well, we're only going to be in the air for 26 minutes. And I'm like, okay. What, what, what why would you, you offer? Is, why would you offer me 
Why would you offer me if then you were going to try she to negate my order? Did she ask for like a the coffee? I didn't ask for a mixed cocktail or something. Like, I was just like, yeah, black coffee. Like, just give me a black coffee. Amazing. You one of those coffee people at home that like gets the artisanal, that does the oh, beans. Oh, yeah. You're doing like a pour over. The, yeah, the pour over, the yeah. thing. You don't do any of that. But yeah, you know Mr. those coffee people. coffee and a coffee grinder. It's wow. just a push forward. I grind wow. the coffee and then I put it in the Mr. Coffee and then I drink the coffee. No French Keep press. No French press. No, I, I mean, I was super late to the coffee game in general because I, I don't really feel the caffeine. Sure. Mm. Like, I, I don't drink it for the energy. A lot of people drink yeah. it because yeah. it like, wakes them up. I drink it because it's like yeah. a nice warm it's beverage to have in the morning. It's I drink it more out of routine at this yeah. point. Yeah. 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 It's, it's a fun caffeine. thing to do when you wake I, up. I, I can hit some espresso an hour I'll before I go to sleep. That nitro cold brew. We'll give you a jolt from nothing. Starbucks. It, it will no- give you a bit what, of a jolt. What is what with these, this wash these product reads. placement? These ad- yeah, this is- <laughs> I drink my nitro cold brew from Starbucks as I board my Delta flight on the way to the Mexico City Soho house. <laughs> Cash three checks at once. <laughs> so I then, wish we were getting those checks right now. So then, oh. so then we take off. Go to sleep. Mm, I fell asleep. No yeah. And yeah, you didn't even get to enjoy the first class. <laughs> no, I man, I just, I mean, it was a comfortable seat. <laughs> I fell asleep. Then, as I wake up, we're about to land. I wake up. She then, like, walks up to me. She goes, You know, I brought you your coffee, but you were, you were passed out. Wow. And I was like, wow. I was like Okay. <laughs> wake me up. Don't wake me up. I don't know what to tell you. But you're, like, don't offer this shit. <laughs> and then try oh. to give me attitude about it. Oh, Wake my, my ass up then. So here's your coffee, Zach, buddy. Zach having random beefs with strangers all the time is funny as hell to me. Dude, it, uh, I, yelled, <laughs> I, yelled at, so I yelled at some dude funny, outside dude. my parents' house yesterday. <laughs> what? Was it yesterday? <laughs> uh, or maybe the day you, before. Why are you in Oregon visiting Yelling at people of the community. Okay, hold on. First of all, all right. You don't live there, sir. You're I, in I, vacation. Was? I got. I got to run. I had him. to run. I w- ran to the store for something that my my mom needed for for you know what she was cooking. So I, I was like, you know what, I'll go do it. It's right down the road. So I'm driving her car. I pull out of the the driveway. I back out of the driveway. Um, as I'm about to go forward, this car comes screaming around the corner, mm. like. They, like takes the turn like it's fucking Tokyo Drift. Mm. And but then has to slow down because I'm in the way. So they like like throw their hands up and they're all pissed off or whatever. So <laughs> I slowly pull up side and I roll the window and I said, slow the fuck down. It's residential. And they, oh, and they drove away. <laughs> Give me attitude because you're driving like an asshole. It's, it's residential as the <laughs> The tagline. <laughs> the movie is slow the fuck down. The tagline is <laughs> it's residential. It's residential. <laughs> that is excellent. Uh, yeah, and I drive excellent up. Excellent dismount. I take Thank my dog home that. tomorrow. We'll see what happens. That's what's up. Oh, so you're you still in Oregon right now? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm leaving tomorrow. Um, yeah, I. You know what else? Here's so you know in Oregon they pump your gas for you, right? Love that. Like, I love a gas so, pumping place. Oh. So it's no longer it's no longer a definite. They do now allow self serve. I think in almost every place, but they they do still have people to pump it. But last last three or four times I've been here, and they've and I've gone up to like a, I just pull up and I'm waiting for someone to come service the car. And it doesn't happen. Then I got to get out. And then as oh. I'm pumping, it's like, oh, can I help you? But are you late, Zach. Zach, you got to have the five. Already in between I got a your tip index. Up? Oh yeah, there's a tip culture to the to the gas pump. Oh yeah, I never tipped him. I learned that in New Jersey because you know obviously it's bordering us, and so you go to New Jersey all the time. And like mm-hmm. you know, back in the days it was two three dollars, right? But I'm thinking with inflation, like you give a brother five dollars, you got to but, drop- but you just gotta have the you gotta have the finger. The, the, the 20 between the fingers no, man, like man, this. I just dropped five, 50 on a fucking me. housekeeper in Hawaii. 550? Uh, yeah. I, le- I left so I like yeah, I left, left food. Oh, you talking about the hotel? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Like, like le- I, and all I had was a 50. I wasn't going to get changed. So Two was, days you was there? No, I was there for four days. Okay. Yeah. 50? 
It was. It was just like, am I gonna go downstairs? Wait in line. Did the trick. Get you, I had a 50. I don't have to tell you. And I was just no, like, oh, that'd be good karma. Crazy. It wasn't good karma because I didn't get my fucking coffee yeah. on the flight. Yes. You got and yelling the flight attendant. Yeah. And but we'll see if nah, I get my gas I think, pump. Zach, if you had that five leaning out the window, don't even say anything. Just have the, Look, the five leaning out. I'm I'm not anti-tipping. I believe in tipping. I believe in tipping well. Yeah. I'm not using a carrot of a $5 bill to get someone to come <laughs> pump my gas where that's their job. But Zach, now, I'll tip him after. On, if Zach, I, if that's but, what, I didn't know no, I was supposed to tip him, no, no, but no, I will no, do it after Zach. now. But I'm not like, here, boy, go over here, over here. Like, I'm not doing that Zach, shit. Zach, you have the option of pumping it yourself. You're consciously not pumping it yourself. We get it. It's his job, but you, you've already demonstrated your tell appreciation you what. for what the I'll guy's tell you what. doing. Everybody at home, you know, we, we've, the newsletter, The Bounce, has been wildly successful. I'm very appreciative of our loyal, listener, our loyal listeners, our loyal readers, our loyal Are supporters. Are you pumping that thing on, on Sirius? If I get a show on Sirius, sure. But no, we got to do other programming right now. That's a whole <laughs> conversation for off the air. Um, <laughs> no, but it's, no, but Old Guy Radio is super good. Uh, but let me say this. I'm not sending out that fucking email tomorrow until I see y'all waving that $5 bill at me. How about that? Mm. Then I'll do my job. Mm. I got a tip before someone does their job? Yes. That's yes. crazy. Look, I'm here for greasing no, the hand tip. at a restaurant. You I'm here for that. Tip before. It's not that you're tipping before. It's just like, brother. So I wave the five here. and then I snatch it back and say, let me see. How you, you wave the five and then, and then, or what you do. This is insane. This is or insane what do, advice. Or what you do is the card is actually behind the five. And so, bomb card. So I'm still tipping pump, before this fucking thing gets pumped. Pump, but you know the five is waiting. You know the five is waiting. You know the five is going to be there. Just You just got to wet the appetite, man. Again, I am not anti-tipping. But this <laughs> wet is the appetite. I'm just going to pump my own gas. I'm good. Nah, I don't son. care. <laughs> if there's people pumping, I am not getting out my way. I do no. want because I don't want them to be replaced because we know that's just going to get rid of jobs. I get to get out the whip, go get my snacks, my Gatorade, gas pumped already. And I no, know we you got Gatorade do product placement or whatever. We got Gatorade product placement. I know you could do the click thing with the yeah. handle and, and do the same thing, but some of them clicks don't be working. And that like, way, Waz is fully, fully hydrated so he can pull into a Taco Bell where he's going to get his new big box meal for $5, like, whatever the fuck he's, he's promoting fact. next. The Baja Fresh? Ooh! Why can't we get that soda anywhere else? I've never seen it anywhere else but Taco Bell. Don't they have, it's like, excellent. a hot sauce for it now? Yeah, they have, like, they, a Baja they're, Fresh they're hot sauce. Out. Baja Blast. Excellent. Have you guys Baja been to a Taco Chips. Cantina yet? No. But, you know, because that's what we needed in America. Corona with... Taco Bell. Yeah. Absolutely. Bring your beach to Taco Bell. <laughs> what is, what is, I'm what a what short 20 minute drive you, from the most beautiful Taco Bell cantina in America, in Pacifica, California. It's right, right, hop, skip, and a jump down the one. Yeah. And Waz, do you have anything else to promote? Bizarre. Promote? Yeah. Besides I mean, you got, myself? Besides nah. yourself, Delta, Mexico City, <laughs> Soho <laughs> listen, House, man, Gatorade, listen, Starbucks, man, I'm, Baja I'm, Fresh I'm, Mountain listen, Dew. Listen, I'm I'm silver medallion at the moment, which means all I get is a check uh, bag. Very, very right. close to gold. I'm and very I close still, to gold. I still yeah. get to do the, um, what you would call it? I still get to do priority. Yes. A lot of people don't know that. Just because your joint is in red doesn't mean you don't get to do the priority. Yo, you get to walk right up it. Yeah. Right up to priority. You got the digital ID? You got the Delta digital oh, ID? Cool. Yo, that saved Quiet me. Quiet is kept. Digital at JF, ID at JFK? Is Are you kidding me? At JFK? I went to pre-check, right? Because I'm pre-check. No, pre-check. I went to pre-check joke, and they bro. said, hey, go to that digital ID. There's absolutely no one there. Bro. I went over there. Quiet I was through security kept. in less than two minutes. Digital ID at JFK. is actually... The new wave. Clear is a joke. Yeah. Clear is a waste of time. Clear's out. Clear's out. Yeah. Like, clear no. plus. Oh, no, I'm clear plus pre check. What's gonna- interesting about this, Maze, is most most product reads don't want you naming competitors. But no. this this one, Waz is, is cool to display. Well, he's got clear. the silver package or whatever yes. to promote this <laughs> shit. Silver medallion, man. Silver medallion. <laughs> Listen, be cool. it's, been, it's been a helpful. It's been helpful to have be a silver medallion. I'm, uh, I'm, I, think- I got uh, global entry. 
finally. So I'm going to use that when I come okay. back from Europe. Okay, I'm excited that's about that. Fire. Yeah, yeah that's, I've never used yeah, that before. When I was going to try to get that, it was waitlisted. Mm. And then I read up on the internet that like everything else is pay for play. Like there's, oh, yeah. people have bots that get you a goddamn. I'm like, come on, y'all. Like, yeah, paid a hundred bucks. That was got a got a hey, the and, and yeah. got the appointment right yeah, away. It was super easy. Yeah, it's definitely and it's definitely worth it. Oh yeah. my god! Oh, you just walk through. You don't even have to yeah, do. It. You don't you talk don't to anybody. To yeah, do diddly. Yeah, okay. it's great. Welcome to the OG Pod, Wozni edition, Zosni mm. edition, Mazni yes, edition. Sir. I'm back. I'm back like I'm back like cooked crack, y'all. <laughs> well, this is promoting to crack now as well. Uh, all right, let's talk some Olympics. As we're recording this, we're about a half hour away from Team USA facing the we're South excited Sudan. About that, uh, I'm going to predict. I know that there was an exhibition. There was a friendly in which it was very close. Team USA barely won. I'm going to predict a 20 plus point win. Yeah, they're going to kick these guys' asses. Now, I have seen that uh, when Joel Bean took the court for, for pregame warm-ups, the crowd in France was booing him mightily. Mightily. And he apparently slowed down his walk and then waved to the crowd. Uh, so he's there He's there to troll. I don't know if he was there to play good basketball. It's been a while since he did that. Yeah. But he is there, and he's a big body. And uh, the big controversy going uh, from the game one victory. Is it a controversy? Look, no, I. All right, now I will say this: I did not watch Game One. Or, sorry, Zach, sorry. Before you go on, not it has become a controversy. Mm-hmm. Should it be? No, a controversy. No, because Team USA won by twenty six fucking points against Nikola Jokic. Yeah, the world has not caught up to Team USA. I'm sick of this shit. <laughs> I'm sick of it. Oh, they got SGA. We got seven of them. Oh, they got they got Jokic, and it was an it was eighty one eighty one when Jokic was on the court. All right, play your ass forty minutes. Then you're not <laughs> going to beat us when we take it seriously. I don't care. Clip it, use it again, save it to use it. I don't give a fuck. We run this shit in US. It's over. I'm not wait, worried about Team Canada. With Tatum, Tatum, though, because it, that, that point is we have everyone we need. If Tatum plays, if Tatum doesn't play, it doesn't matter. We're going to yeah. go beat the best player in the world by 26 points. But that's points. not what people are crying about. It's just right. reputationally. What are they crying about? Reputationally, yeah. the fifth best guy on this team should not be playing, you know, 15 minutes to whatever, 18 minutes or whatever it was that Derek White played. The okay. fourth best guy on this team, you know, should not be playing 20 minutes a game the way Drew Holiday did ahead of Jason Tatum. I believe Larry Bird and Magic Johnson both played 19 and 17 minutes a game in 1992. What are we doing? Are we not going to mention... Michael Jordan played 23 minutes a game. Are we not going to mention Magic specifically? What? What As being a sick person and getting more minutes than Jason Tatum. Still alive, alive, isn't he? Pretty fucking healthy now. Pretty healthy now. We're not going to mention this. Here's what I'll say. Here's what I'll say about the Tatum thing. Steve Kerr has a certain basketball philosophy. Yeah. That involves passing quickly, movement. Uh, reading and reacting. Um, if you are going to hold on to the ball, actually create an advantage for your teammates. Mm-hmm. None of those things describe Jason Tatum. What I love like, is what I love is no one cares that Halliburton didn't play. Right. Well, I, I wrote cares. down Tatum DNP, and then I had to go back and add. Oh, yeah, Halliburton also did not play in this game. Again, Halliburton (laughs) would play 40 minutes a game if he played for Australia. It's not as if he's not one of the best players in the tournament. Same with Tatum. Same with Tatum. Yeah, same with Tatum. Yeah. But, like, on this team where people are so good and guys like AD and Bam are going to be excellent in the roles – that have been carved out for them. So therefore, and and beat is here. So that means Tatum can't get minutes at the four. Mm-hmm. Braun and KD are the threes. I guess theoretically, you might say to yourself, why can't he play Devin Booker's position? Sure. Maybe. But, but, but here's the thing. All right. 
obviously we're recording this before the game against South Sudan. Kerr said he was going to play. I'm guessing he played, played well, and it's fine. Like, yeah. I, there's this, like, there's this, it's I saw this the conversation. That should be conferred on to him, Zach, but it's because. Funny. The status is you're on Team USA. That is the status. Fact. And you're going to play at times, and you're not going to play at times. There's 12 All-Stars, well, 11 All-Stars and Derek White to, to get through. <laughs> no one was pissed, like, hey, why is Tayshaun Prince playing so much? Like, no one cared. Yeah. No one cared. It is this whiny ass culture now that any little thing is disrespect and hatred and all this bullshit. Tatum's going to play. He's going to be good. They're going to win the gold medal. And this idea that you have to cater like, well, he's part of the future of Team USA basketball. So you upset him now that he's not going to play later. Fuck up. We got other people. Period. We have other people. We'll Period. have other all-stars to play. We will. Like, I think he's going to be fine. I think he's going to play. I think he's going to play well. I think he's going to win a gold medal. I think he's going to play again in 2028. You know why? Because he's going to be in L.A. Yeah, because hopefully I think it's LeBron be will be not be on the team at that point. LeBron's still going to be playing. Uh, I think but, that's pretty obvious. That, I mean, and, look, and maybe I, Tatum will get bumped off the team for Brody at that point. I just well, think yeah, Brody's definitely going to be in 2028. I mean, it's in his backyard. Tatum's whole offensive game of dribble, 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 not necessarily the sharpest playmaker. Right. Like, so sure. he doesn't have the Derek White stuff going for him. Who's like this connector, ball mover, quick release, all of that stuff. Um, combine that with never getting downhill. I mean, for the love of God, even if you want to say, oh, uh, you know, Anthony Edwards is not the player Jason Tatum is. Excuse me. He's fulfilling a role. He's actually getting to the cup when he gets the ball. Like it's it's a function that's needed on the team. He's fulfilling also, a function. Also, Ian yeah. might be better than Tatum at this point. Easy, easy, <laughs> easy, easy. Uh, well, easy. the boys, be respectful, okay? Uh, Tatum is a champion. He is a Bro. final MVP's teammate. He's really good. <laughs> All NBA. Bro, listen. No, I wait. Think let it, me let me ask this question. Ahead. Let me ask this question. Because everything you just described in terms of type of player, you could have said about Carmelo Anthony in 2008, 2012, 2016, right? I disagree. You could, dribble, Mello, jab, Yeah, but he's just stops. way better at it than Tatum is. Oh, no, no, no for, for, for sure. But he still had a stigma of like ball stopper, yeah, yeah, offense, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, all that yeah, stuff, right? Yeah. Doesn't pass the ball enough, whatever. Even when he was playing under D'Antoni, it got better. He but, could turn himself into a stretch four for Team USA at times. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm i willing to see, like, is Tatum going to do that, right? Mm -hmm. I do think they'll change the way they play. Like, I think most players will change the way they play in that role for Team USA. It's not, it's not like the NBA game. Um, so I'm interested to see if Tatum did that against South Sudan or any of the other games moving forward. But, um, but like, yeah, like, I, again, he's going to play. It, I think there's a big difference. People are like, oh, he got benched. No, he just didn't play. There's yeah. a difference between getting benched and not playing. Bro, it's an embarrassment of riches. And yeah. also, right. like, <laughs> the two guys who play a position who are playing above you, Braun and, and KD, looked excellent in a way that we Dude. know Tatum isn't capable of it's, looking. Like, I, it's just like, I love yo, the you're idea. You're not capable of being this good. You're not, it's not in you. All the memes happened already, but I just love the idea of like, ooh, Serbia's off to like, oh, what it was, a 10-2 star. So like, oh, here comes Serbia. Oh, Jokic, all this stuff. And they're like, all right, Katie, get your ass off the bench. It's go time. Yeah. And he lit them up. Mm -hmm. yeah. Lit them up. And that's why I'm not worried. That's why I'm not worried. Like, yeah. just the idea that like, you know, Bruno Caboclo is going to guard KD on the island. Like, it's, two years away, man. It's He's absurd. Two years away. It's, and it's just like, yo, like, LeBron, like, straight up, like, yo, we're going to dictate the terms of how this game is played on offense. It's going to mm -hmm. be our, we're dictating it. Yeah. These are the matchups we want to exploit. These are the shots we want to find. Steph Curry, by the way, I know I'm not breaking the mold here, son, but, like, when he's not shooting and he's planting a fucking dude with a screen and everybody's death, he's created three layups doing that shit. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Tatum, you don't do that. You don't fucking do this. You don't do any of this shit. But Tatum is good. Hold on. Tatum's no, good. he's good. He's yeah. good. But like Steph, when he's not holding the ball physically, can generate three layups for a teammate. 
like against one of the three, four best teams in the tournament. Steph's doing yeah. this. Like, t- like these are the guys who are playing. Like these guys are on another planet. Like, like, just, I, this idea that you have to cater to him is so crazy. No, just, like, oh, like what if he doesn't want to play later on? All right, all right. Good thing we're still Jason the best. Tatum. We'll bring our other best players. Like it, we're never going to put the D squad in the Olympics like we do the World Cup. No, we're never going to do that. Like. It's that's not just, possible. That's not how it goes. We don't care much, about the, the World the Cup. NBA and guys actually, are too, too egomaniacs yeah, to like I, allow some other country to get that stage. I wish we had that care about the World Cup. I wish Me we too. would dominate both tournaments. Me too. I agree um, with you. But we don't. And so Team USA only cares about the Olympics. And that's what they go out and, and win. Um, I actually thought... So hear me out on this. Now... Team France almost lost to Japan, which was going to be hilarious. I think they're it a was, little over. I think we're, we need to pump the brakes on Air France. Well, they have no guards, right? Yeah. They have a couple of young Frankie guards who Smokes could be good. Is, Frankie Smokes is is one of their lead guards. He's out no, the league uh, my, for a reason. My God, Nando DiColo, you know, no offense to him, but he's a little long in the tooth at this point. Evan Fournier fucking sucks. I don't care. Like, he sucks. I, <laughs> I'm never going to be worried about him. done. They were running pick and rolls with him and Gobert with Wemby just in the corner in the fourth quarter and Japan damn near won because of that. But yeah. here's something I found interesting with Japan. Once Rui got Rui got thrown out of the game with like uh, eight minutes left or eight and a half minutes left. I'm in, a big in, Rui in guy, quarter. by the way. Off-season Rui, he, that guy likes to get after it. What does that mean? He's, he's, Training? He, everything. Okay, everything. Soho <laughs> everything. House. Mexico City Soho House. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but I actually found something interesting. Like, I do, I worry about Team France, like, maybe an Olympics from now, right? Because of Wemby, yeah. because of some of the young guys, because of the size. I do think there's something there, and I just believe in Wemby over, over anything at this point. But, um, but I actually found, like, for this tournament... Japan actually gave Team USA a game plan of like, just play fast against them. They're slow. They're mm-hmm. slow as fuck. And with the team, the, and that's with Japan, right? Team USA's size and athleticism, I think if they just push the pedal, it's uh, like, I know that, I know the gold medal in 2020 or whenever the fuck they played. Also, 2021, like, this is not, was close. that's not an um, Embiid game. Don't fuck no, around. No, 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 no. That's it AD. Bam. That's Bam. <laughs> like, Even put LeBron at the five, like yeah, that's yeah. Like this, this, this is not. Let's let's not play these games. And BB, you're gonna play the Tatum bro here, because we're I, gonna just like. I'm, I'm more worried about them playing and B than them not playing Tatum. Because it be, I mean, maybe he was great against South Sudan today. I don't know, but he he's looked horrible in all these he's in terrible like, friendlies. Shit. Yeah, and like he's another Tatum type that doesn't make quick decisions. Doesn't think in terms of oh, this is gonna set up my teammate. Mm-hmm. He's gotten better. He got better last year at passing out of the double team yeah. and doing it. He's gotten better, but he started from such a low place. We're like. It was times in the playoffs to the past few years, like any hard double was damn near turnover, yeah. you know? But he um, also, so, I mean, he couldn't move, but that, he can't move right now. He can't like, move. Yeah. He's, he's slow as fuck right now. Yeah. But I'm happy um, he's there, though. He's just not playing well. I'm happy. I'm, ha- I'm glad yeah. he's there. I'm glad he's there, and I think it's hilarious that he spurned uh, Team France. I kind of wish he was on Team France, though, so they could throw all three of them out there. <laughs> oh, my God. That would be disgusting. <laughs> That'd be amazing, man. That'd oh, be amazing. Rudy and, Rudy and, by three and setters. Embiid on the same team? Hell yeah. yeah. Oh, Hell yeah. Gosh. Yeah, we need a documentary for that. that we need great. a Last Dance documentary just for these two and a half weeks yeah. mm-hmm. in Paris. Was as our as our official uh, clutch spokesman, what did you yes, think? Sir. What did you think of flag bearer LeBron James? On the river. So I thought, look, I could be cynical about it. I looked at those shots. I looked at that video. It looked fucking cool. Bro, so that's what I'm getting at. Um, And I've talked about this with you guys before, is that especially as a black American, it is taboo to wave the flag. Mm -hmm. Like, Like metaphorically... Like spiritually to be seen as a black person who's like this ultimate flag waver because of the associate, the affiliations that we have with like, you know, raising three flags on your front porch guy, like who that guy is Mm -hmm. in the imagination, the collective imagination of our country can sometimes seem so antithetical to what the black existence has been here. 
And so, like, just as a black community, like, people feel like get like uneasy about the idea that you would proudly wave an American flag, except for the Olympics. <laughs> like, <laughs> it just works. It just freaking works, dude. Like, I was brought to some like level of emotion, like yeah. LeBron being at the forefront, man. Like our NBA guy, like being one of the flag wavers for the entire the flag waver for the entire country, and I could tell LeBron was like caught up in the moment like this Mm -hmm. is he's like damn like it's me they got representing this entire freaking country um that i'm from it's it's crazy i I, bro i like i know i'm with you like i can easily be cynical about all of this stuff and like you know like i have people in my life who i'm close to i'm not gonna mention my girlfriend um She's gives no me shit. Yeah. yeah, no names. <laughs> yeah. My chick. Yeah. <laughs> um, she gives me shit every time I wear my Mets uh hat that has the the, the NY logo is an American flag. Yeah. She's gonna like people are gonna think you're one of those flag people. I'm like nobody's going to think that about me. <laughs> I'm repping the Mets, and also like. <laughs> And, and, but also, but also, it's just like, we're in America, guys. Yeah. It's okay, like, to not be like, yo, I'm all about the militarism that the flag represents, obviously. But, like, yeah, I do love the people of our country. I, I do think, like, we have great people that do great things and kind people and amazing people and talented people. Mm-hmm. And I don't mind celebrating the fact that we all share this bond that is that is living in this goddamn country. You know, like I understand, I understand the queasiness of it. But like for me, watching LeBron um do that and Coco Golf too, and like mm-hmm. just, you know, like they, they had a picture uh, or, or like I think it was, I forget, it might have been Ice who posted it. But like Chase Budinger is not a volleyball guy. Yeah. And like him and LeBron yeah. like dapped up. Yeah, like, no, yeah. this yeah. is fire. Yeah, <laughs> that's like cool? that was the number one volleyball prospect in high school back yes. when he was yeah, yes. like he's he's Chase. literally about now that. He's representing the, the good old red, white, and blue mm-hmm. in, in, in volleyball. I mean, yeah. Man, I I need oh. to Whoa, whoa. Misty. And, I'm getting Misty. Misty. And that, and that is why was is in full support of J.D. Vance. (laughs) (laughs) J.D. Vance has had a week, hasn't he? Oh, my my goodness. goodness. They took the gloves off on this fool. Jesus Christ. They are on his head. Like, every podcast he's ever done has become a a talking point. Um, That's how they get you. Listen to what grows. One more thing. Fuck, what was I going to say? Oh, no. Last thing. Like, I'm watching the gymnastics, (laughs) um, you know, um, the the team the team event yesterday that yeah. you know America ended up winning obviously Simone Biles her story with Tokyo and just goat. like the emotion of all of that yeah. like the parents in the stands crying and they're wearing their American stuff and just like knowing like how hard these people work to get to this freaking moment and that they get to deliver and that they get to rep the cut like I I like I'm I was getting teary eyed bro and then she talks shit on social media. To that girl who was like a m- few months ago was like, I'm here for the training for the team and everything. Like they're lazy, they're not focused, blah, blah, blah. Oh wow. Somebody did that. Yeah, months ago. And then so mm-hmm. I th- I think Simone Biles posted something like lazy, yeah, you know, what a oh, lazy, God. you know, for their gold win- gold medal yeah. winning team photo. Act, yeah. act, like, act like you've been there before, Simone Biles. No, talk shit. No, act talk like it. you've been there before. Talk punch win with down. class, y'all. Punch win with class. Down always. You know, you know the Zosny podcast is all about class, folks. Win with class, yeah. guys. If you get that me. class, Soho House in Mexico City. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, before, I before we get off this flag, Barry, I, I, I love everybody making. House. They got a beach house in Barcelona, from oh, what boy. I'm hearing. I'm yeah. going to be there next you're month. Gonna, so. We'll see. You're we'll going to check see. it out firsthand, I'm yeah. sure. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I Steve. love a Twitter moment. Everybody posting the same meme, everybody making the same joke with this George Washington crossed in Delaware thing. Yeah. Not yes. enough people showed love to the rewatching. Yeah, what the photos. fuck, man? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you did it first. Who, yeah. who showed who love to George it? Washington again, first? LeBron first. rips us off. <laughs> who did it first? Is Come crazy. on. That's it's fucked yeah. up. Come on. Y'all deserve your flowers, man. Y'all deserve your flowers. This other angle, 
This other angle kills me because of Derek White. Derek White Where's in the poncho. <laughs> Come on, Derek White. It's okay to get a little wet, man. It's not like Derek you got hair White. to mess up. What are you doing? With the, with the up close photo, I saw this shit. Uh, and I died laughing because he's. Oh my got god. This, LeBron's got this beautiful so smile. Funny. You know, you got yeah. Jimmer and the three on three team behind him. Oh, Joel yeah. hey, hanging Jimmer? out. You want to bring that clutch gene with you to Paris? <laughs> Choking ass? No wonder you're not in the NBA. <laughs> Had like nine chances to put Serbia Wait, away. No, the three, on three all We already lost three on three? We lost the first game because he couldn't hit a clutch shot. You. It's 1919. He's going for two pointers left and right. Missed them all. I'm not going to hold you. Then he couldn't box um, out. On my YouTube um, algorithm. Obviously, I watch a lot of Rosillo. I'm a big Rosillo guy. I'm not just being a company guy. I loved him when he was yes, doing Scott Van Pelt. Like, I fuck with Rosillo. And I got three seconds into Jimmer talking about three on three. I changed the channel. Oh. I said, I said, no. I said, Last no. time I was interested in watching him play I basketball, said, Kawhi no. Leonard was locking his ass up in the NCAA tournament like he always did. <laughs> Let's bring our good players to three on three. Let's bring man, Chase. Why isn't Chase double double By eventing? Way, Langston mm. Galloway was wasting all that time with Team USA. He could have been training for three on three. Could have been hooping. Could have been hooping. I've also apparently Ice Cube is pissed at Adam Silver. Let me find the exact quote. Someone tweeted out, just watch Serbia beat USA in three on three basketball at Ice Cube. Can you do something about this by 2028? Ice Cube retweeted it with because of Adam Silver's pettiness, the US didn't have our best athletes in Paris. Embarrassing, angry emoji. <laughs> I'm here for our this. Best shit. athletes are playing for Team USA already. The real team. Commissioner Beef, this is what we need. Oh, God. So good. <laughs> what else we got, guys? What else we got, indeed? Well, yeah. oh. <laughs> well, I know what we've got. All right, man. I don't like to kick a man when he's down. Okay? Oh, God. Oh, don't like goodness. to kick a man when he's down. Especially, like, you know, it's not always your fault. Sometimes you just get bad financial advice you trust the yeah. wrong people you trust the wrong agent like so much can happen right like and i and look i don't expect anyone to navigate their life their profession their negotiation any of that stuff perfectly but scotty pippen hosted with this graphic of i don't know who the fuck this yeah, is with. This is like yeah. someone so, from v for vendetta i don't I know who this explain is explain the graphic read the read the quote the quote this is from at Scotty Pippen. I had a dream I met Satoshi Nakamoto last night. He didn't see me as just another player. Instead, Satoshi was proud that I was opening a new lane for hashtag RWA in the Real crypto world market. In the crypto market. Bringing the at game five ball to the blockchain lets me pass history to the community, <laughs> innovate sports, and bring a real world sports object to decentralization. Uh, Satoshi said, quote, if you don't believe me or don't get RWA, I don't have time to try to convince you. Sorry. End quote. Where there's Satoshi, there's room to be the best. Be like Satoshi. Basketball emoji. Game5ball.com. Okay. So, is, so he, is it July of 2024 or 2020? What are we doing? <laughs> what are we doing? Are we fresh what? off of our first stimmy te checks or what? Well, Shout Scott ET is an opportunity for an undeveloped market because no one's done yeah. this, right? Mm -mm. So oh let's start with Satoshi God. Nakamoto. Satoshi Nakamoto. Okay. I don't know who this is. is. I'm not trying to be rude an, or dismiss He's an alien founder. Yes, yeah, it's an it's alias, alias founder of like an court. internet person, kind of like. Okay. Guy Fox, I mean, the mask is not a joke. Like, that was a right. thing. Banksy-esque, Dread Pirate okay. Roberts, the guy who started the Silk Road. Like, an unknown person on the internet that devised the blockchain and developed Bitcoin. So, you okay. can call him, you know, an, a very influential figure in cryptocurrency. Okay. Here he is depicted as <laughs> a Jabberwocky. In yeah, a, yeah, in a this is, hoodie? Yeah. <laughs> that's a great in an that's AI a great rendering point. of yeah. Scotty Pippen's dream that he had. Oh, you think this is AI? You know, this is a real shot. Huh. I don't know. So, okay, so all right, he's having a more or less disagree. 
fictional fairy tale, oh, larger than life God. person talk to him in a dream. And so now let's talk about whatever the fuck game five ball is. Cause yes, I went to game five ball.com and you have a virus now. Uh, well, I'm, I'm, open up your cash I'm, I'm already, I'm already one of the founding supporters for a token. Is it a couple 33 tokens to support my man number 33 Scotty how Pippen? Much is, how much does 33 tokens cost you? Six bucks. <laughs> it cost me two <laughs> bottles of his digits bourbon <laughs> whiskey. Maze May, Maze went to game5ball.com and waved a five out the window and just said, Come here, Scotty. <laughs> yep. Come here. Come pump this gas. So the game five ball is from the 1991 NBA yeah. finals. Yeah. And so the idea is one, they won a five. Okay. Guess the Lakers, you, yeah. you buy a token, you buy. Wait, Scotty took that ball for himself? Michael I Jordan's guess. first championship? Yes. Wow. Well, allegedly. And so well, if you buy he took tokens, the ball. Pissed them out. if you buy into this cryptocurrency, you can authenticate the historic championship basketball as a genuine sports object. No idea. Look at the means. ball. And you can create a high resolution 3D digital twin of the basketball minted as an NFT. So you can get an NFT 3D version of the ball. But if you scroll all the way down through his five point plan, through all of his jargon and nonsense about what he wants to share with you as an investor in tokenomics here, you know, 1 billion tokens, et cetera. The, it says at the very bottom, the Game 5 ball tokens represent a fractional share in the value of the 1991 mm. Game 5 championship ball and not physical ownership of the ball. The physical ball remains in the possession of the custodian. Who's the custodian? You guessed it, Scotty Pippen. So you what's going to buy I, stock in his 1991 Game 5 championship ball? So if, if I wanted to buy the ball outright, would it cost me more than $1,000? I don't it think shouldn't. so. Is Scotty Pippen that hard pressed for bread? So, uh, look, this is uh, uh, no. Lord knows, I'm not. I'm not fucking Hunter S. Thompson out here when I write. You know, I can. I can admit that. But when I go to Game5Ball.com and the first thing I see is for the first time ever. Dot dot dot. We are tokenizing history with history. Yep. Buddy, you need a copywriter. That's not. That's not a good tagline. <laughs> you already turned me off to this. I mean, he turned me—he turned me off with with the AI rendering of of the Jabberwocky. So is on the, the court. idea that you're like, because so I remember t I talked to this dude Sean Witherspoon, right? And yeah. he, you know, he's like a sneaker designer, had a bunch yeah, yeah. of cool boutiques famous. and all of this shit, whatever. Famous dude, and he was hawking these vintage. Um, this vintage NFT stuff where, um, you know, like in the metaverse or whatever, your people, you can get like clothes that are vintage, right? right. Like, they like, just like there's a vintage market that's going crazy right now in out in the real world, like in there, like, all right. Yeah. Your guy's going to, if, if people are going to care about what people have in the digital space, then if if you believe that as a true premise, I happen to not. But if you do, all right, I can see why it's like, yo, my guy's going to rock dope, like, you know, original Nirvana tees or whatever, mm -hmm. right? Cool. What the fuck are you going to do with a Game 5 replica ball in the digital space? This <laughs> is your like guy going to have a house and he's going to have a game room and he's going to have a man cave that you put the... The Scotty Pippen game ball in like what? This is the thing I'd never understood. Like I don't. I, I'm. And why can't you just get a di a, a bootleg rendering? When I, people I, be like, I, oh, I, it hasn't been authenticated by Scotty. So what? It's a I'm, JPEG. I'm waving that five dollar bill. He'll authenticate that shit. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the thing. Look, I, I I'm guessing all these people in this world will laugh at me because I I don't know what the fuck this shit is. I don't know. But when when NBA Top Shot, remember that whole craze? And I was yeah. I was assured. I was assured that by was everybody a, in this that, was that this is forever. This is never going that away. And then nine months later, no one had shit. And so the players got played, paid. So that was yeah. nice. But that was the thing I didn't understand is when people were like, okay, 
well, now I get to own this highlight. And I'm like, motherfucker, I can go to YouTube and I can watch that highlight without paying you whenever I what want. If, what if they got to the scrub YouTube of it, though? It's on. It's <laughs> online. It's on social media. Okay, so I don't get to watch this Brooke Lopez dunk. All right. I gotta remember it. So I like started tweeting about this shit in Top Shot today and someone tweeted me, Top Shot literally gave out refunds to people that... Uh, people still holding on to moments last month. It got that bad. That's what they said to me. Oh, I Thanks, don't Adam like this, this digital shit. I do not understand how it, I know it things have value. If someone will pay money for, it. I understand that concept. It's yeah. like art or whatever. Right. Sure. But why the fuck would you want any of this? Yeah. And I waste I my did. money on a lot of dumb shit. Just the I fact buy a that lot you... of dumb shit off TikTok yeah. and Instagram. I get it. But those but are tangible for me, things. For me, like, if you want to talk shit about my sneaker collection or my clothes or my whatever, sure. like, at the end of the day, you cannot do the functional equivalent of a right click and replicate that thing that I possess. Well, I yeah, can come I in and some, take I a photo some, of it, right? I, but, like, I can't wear the shoes. Maze, I'm not talking. You can't have it. With I'll the send right you, click, send, somebody I'll has send to you a make fucking it. photo of everything I have. Like that doesn't yeah. mean anything. No, I like, know. I'm not anything. To make I'm just this laptop. Like you I can't can put right my shoes on. It. You can't dribble that fucking ball. It's insanity. Not yet. Like it doesn't. But make- shouts to the NFT people, man. <laughs> you know, like when y'all getting pussy in the metaverse, and and you NFT telling your, metaver- your metaverse person, like, yo, hit it from the back now. Like when y'all doing that and actually like mm-hmm. getting y'all rocks off to that, mm-hmm. God bless, God bless. I'm sure it'll work out. At my hotel in New York City, <laughs> when we were staying there at the at the Dream Dream Inn by Hyatt in the lobby, next to one of what seemed like three clubs nightclubs that were in yeah. the lobby of my hotel. That was nothing, nothing but clubs on 16th Street, man. This there was <laughs> framed digital, like kind of holographic panels like screens and i was like oh cool whatever an art installation and it wasn't until day two or something that i realized that these were nfts for sale (laughs) and so someone put unframed digital (laughs) art in the lobby of the hotel on display and you could walk up and like scan the qr code and buy the nft and that art will still stay there in the hologram in the lobby of the hotel as long as yeah. somebody's paying to have it up. So I, I hear what you're saying. Like the like shoes is a great example, right? The price of shoes being what it is and the demand and all that stuff, I think to an outsider could seem sure insane. But sure. the thing is, is that enough people agree that this shit is valuable, that there's a market for it. And Scammers. with NFTs, with, NF- with NFTs, it's just become people telling you that there's a market for it without there being any demand. I don't this know a thing. single for a person other than Mike Ryan with an Obi top and dunk or something from like four years ago. I don't know a single person that owns an NFT. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Maybe Pablo Torre Those, does. Those like, well, let's take sneakers, for example. And your metaverse, your virtual reality person wants to buy from the official Nike store. Why shouldn't I buy a bootleg? That looks exactly like it. Mm-hmm. That probably will be free. Mm-hmm. Put my man in a bootleg Nike. People will be like, oh, I can't authenticate it to the Nike store. Okay. This is based on something that exists in real life, fam. Now, I will say this. Back in the day when I worked for Oakley, there was the head of security for Oakley. We were talking about like fake things and then bootleg things. He would just walk the streets of, he would go to New York every once in a while. He would walk the streets of New York. And if someone was selling fake Oakleys, he put them all into a bag and walked away. And if they, he was like, he would like basically threaten them of like, you're selling bootleg merchandise. I'll, I'll have you thrown in jail. Oh my so there God. are consequences to bootleg stuff. Lord have mercy. Shouts to Oakley. Wait, how, to do Oakley. you know this guy personally? I met him once, maybe twice, uh, when I went to the headquarters or whatever. Yeah, oh, okay. like, he, there were literally stories so about this. Of, like he was, he's head of security for like the the main office for the company. Or, oh yeah, yeah company. Not, no, not for the yeah, store. Yeah, yeah, yeah for yeah, the yeah. company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I do like the <laughs> idea of a security guard, <laughs> not for the Arden Fair for the Mall. Arden Fair <laughs> Mall in Sacramento, <laughs> going around and pulling cards on bootleg Oakley sellers. I yeah. mean, yeah, yeah. If you want to be, the, if you want to do that. 
sure. If you want to enforce it yourself, but even if he like called the cops, I bet I bet the cops wouldn't even do anything about it. Scotty Pippen, man, we wish you the best. I know it has to burn you when you look at Franz Wagner's contract. I get it. Um, it would probably burn me too if I were you. But man. Uh oh. You gotta get some better people around you, bro. Yeah, it's it's been a rough it's five, rough. ten. Did anyone ever try that that whiskey or bourbon or whatever he was selling? I mean, no. I tried to look up I tried to look up today to see if there was any sort of like Scotty Pippen's digits bourbon was a right. massive scam or something, but I, there it's there's no like it was a scam like there was no bourbon in it. I don't know, just you know, like he put his name on something that was ill advised. I think he was, but he was super late to the like branded liquor game too, right? Like it's not like he was cutting right cutting no, edge he was on super that. Late, yeah. What's hot right now? NFTs. <laughs> I figure what he's going to endorse in four years. Meet the custodian. Um, yeah, shout to Scotty Pippen. I'm sorry that you're going through this. I'm sure it'll work out. Yeah, he'd be better off getting with Trump and them doing talks at the, the RNC, man, mm-hmm. to get some paper. Get it on that right wing grift. There's a lot of money in that gravy train, bro. I bet Amber Rose got paid a lot of money to be at that RNC. She got some money for that, bro. Yeah. Trust, she got a check. All right. Make sure you subscribe to Patreon, patreon.com slash count the dings. Salute. Thank you to everyone who came out to the live show. Thank you to everyone who yeah, came out to yeah, Mo's wedding. to all you guys, yeah. man. God bless. Shout out to Team USA Basketball. Nothing but gold.